Welcome to the farms.com risk management educational grain commodity marketing school video series. This video series is being brought to you and sponsored by Decal Brand Seed to educate producers and farmers across Canada about commodity grain marketing. Well, in this 22nd video, we're going to continue our part three of technical analysis. Today we're going to be uh, our we're going to continue our chart patterns and techniques. We're going to look at uh, retracements and corrections, key reversals, relative strength index, MACD, M A C D, uh, moving average convergence divergence indicator, and then finally moving averages. And this will complete our part three of technical analysis. Uh, so let's start off with retracements and corrections. You can see from this little chart here, uh, there's there's a guy by the name of Leonardo Fibonacci who developed this uh, pattern or technique in um, the uh, 13th century uh, and he believed that his study showed that markets move in cycles. In other words, when a market is moving down, like in this example here, eventually the market may find a bottom and it's going to retrace part of that move back up. He found in his study that uh, corrections tend to be 38%, 50%, and 62%. Corrections provide price objectives. Um, the uh, retracement projections will often point to uh, an, an old resistance support or gap. Uh, it basically allows uh, producers to maybe enter position. Uh, maybe you've missed the top here, so the mark comes down, starting to come back up. You can maybe enter position at that 38, 50, or 62. Uh, maybe take some profits on the position you had, or perhaps uh, uh, identify the strike price that should be used for a put or a call. Let's let's show you an example of Fibonacci retracement. This is the 2011 corn December daily futures chart and you can see here that the market's been rising. But all of a sudden there at the end a little bit of a correction and then we had that retracement. Now in this case the market's gone above the 62. The first objective was around 630. Uh, the second was, uh, was around 648 and then the third was 665. Um, so a uh, producer you know, may, may have missed the top here, could have waited for that retracement, would have got that 38, 50, and 62%. Let's talk about key reversals. So you can see in this example, we're gonna start with the bearish key reversal at the top here. And um, basically, uptrending uh, sets a higher high and a lower low that than the previous day and a close that's lower than the previous day's close. In other words, you can see that the last uh, tick here is wider than the previous day, but then closes lower than the previous day. That's a signal that maybe that uptrend has come to an end. A bullish key reversal is actually the opposite, where the 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 day's range is wider than the previous day and then closes higher than the previous day. You need actually two or three more days of this, where you see higher closing highs in order to confirm this key reversal trend. Let's look at an example of a bearish key reversal. This is the December Chicago wheat daily futures chart. You can see there's a little tick there on the chart that shows where the, the pattern was wider than the previous day but closed lower. And eventually the market did continually move lower. So, um, you know, it's not the only indicator you should use, but I think you should use it in combination with other indicators that we'll talk about here in a second. Uh, example of a bullish key reversal, this is the 11 November soybean daily futures chart. And you can see there, right at the beginning, there's a indicator where the pattern for the day was wider and you closed higher. Eventually the market did move higher and then kind of went sideways most of 2011. Um, relative strength index. Uh, you can see a lot of these charts if you go to www.farms.com, maybe use DTN, maybe you use a live quote system like QT Plus. Uh, but a lot of charts you can add uh, different indicators at the bottom. So you got the daily or the continuation chart at the top, you got the moving averages we'll talk about here in a second, and then at the bottom you got the RAS and then the MACD, the relative strength index. Um, and and um, so the, this is the relative strength down here, the first uh, kind of red line. It's a popular momentum measure developed by Wells Wilder in 1978. It's a mathematical formula that uses recent futures prices to assess the strength of a trend, measures the internal strength of a, a commodity, measure short-term momentum values, uh, usually are stuck around 50, indicate there's no trend or no momentum. Anything above 50, uh, uh, signals a strong trend where momentum is picking up and then vice versa. It's, it's usually the average 14 days up uh, closing values divided by the average of the 14 day down closing values. 
Price and um, RIS divergence suggests a price reversal. RIS gives early warning signals. Uh, RIS alerts producers to opportunities. So you can see here at the top, when you get to this value at 70, the market is uh, said to be overbought. When you get to a, maybe a, a 30 or below 30, the market is said to be oversold. Let's give you an example of RIS. This is the 2011 November Canola Daily Futures chart. And you can see here at the very bottom where I circled um, the market uh, peaking. You can see at the very top there it's peaking. All of a sudden the RIS is starting to come down. Market's starting to come down. And uh, so may, maybe giving you an indication that uh, the, the downside is picking up. Um, MACD indicator, moving average convergence diversions is the, the one at the very bottom, the red line at the bottom, and it fluctuates between above and below zero. Popular momentum uh, indicator, again developed by a Gerald Appel in the late 70s. Um, MACD basically subtracts the longer moving average from the shorter. Uh, it's basically uh, and then uh, offers both trend following and momentum. It fluctuates again above and below zero. Um, producers can look for the single line crossovers, center line crossovers, and divergence to generate signals. Let's give you an example. This is the 2011 December Minneapolis wheat futures contract. And you can see again there I've circled uh, an example there where the market is peaking, all of a sudden it's starting to come down, and that MACD is starting to pick up some steam, go below zero. Zero. Bullish MACD is the 2011 October CME Lean Hogs futures, and you can see that the MACD is starting to move up higher, crossing zero. The two lines are crossing, crossing above zero. Market's moving higher, and that's a, a bullish sign. Let's talk about moving averages. Moving averages. There's there's different moving averages that uh, traders and producers can use. I, I typically like to use the 30, 50, 100, 200 day moving average. You can see in this chart here. I've indicated which one's which, and um, this is the December Cotton Daily Futures chart, and you can see the market moving considerably higher, and then all of a sudden, moving averages really are a lagging indicator uh, based on past prices, so it, it can tell you, tell you that maybe a trend is, is starting to change. There's a simple moving average and an exponentially moving average. Um, uh, you can see the market all of a sudden falling lower and then eventually crossing below those moving averages. So again, it's a lagging indicator. So it's just one indicator that's be used among uh, some of the other indicators as well. Let's give you an example of a bullish moving average. This is October gold for 2011. You can see if you go far enough back on a monthly chart, all the moving averages are crossing each other. And that was a bullish signal. You saw the RIS moving higher, the MACD moving higher. Uh, you can also use volume as well. I haven't talked about volume, but uh, there's volume at the bottom of the chart here. Um, as volume picks up, as markets are moving higher, that's quite bullish. And you can see since then, gold has really just continued to move higher. And all the moving averages are above each other. Markets well above the 200-day moving average, and that's quite bullish. And bearish uh, moving average would be October crude oil. Um, you can see here that the market's peaked, starting to break through the 30, which is the green one, the, the 50 is the blue, the 100 is the black, and eventually breaking the 200. Once we break the 200, the red line, that's a very bearish signal, and you can see now down to about $88 a barrel after hitting about $115, $120 a barrel. Okay, so um, in summary, um, understanding chart patterns techniques that we've done here in the past uh, three sessions. Uh, so understanding key reversals, uh, retracements, corrections, RIS, MACD, use them all in combination with each other. Moving averages can help a producer identify when to hold or when to fold or when to pull that trigger. Technical analysis should be used in combination with fundamental analysis because it's not foolproof. Full Sometimes there are false signals. Think of technical analysis as a possible warning signal that maybe a trend may be changing, whether up or down. In our next video series, we're going to look at uh, the process of developing a marketing plan. Thanks for joining me today. I hope you've uh, learned a little bit more about chart patterns and techniques, and we hope to see you next time. Take care.